an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth, re-entering the atmosphere at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour, causing heat about half that on the temperature of the sun, almost as hot as it is here today, and do all this, and do all this, and do it right, and do it first before this dictate is out, then we must be bold. For as long as we humans have been able to contemplate the sky, the moon has stood out as a major source of wonder and inspiration. In 1962, the U.S. President John F. Kennedy challenged us to put a man on the moon before the end of that decade. It was a risky race in every sense of the word. But a mere seven years later, Neil Armstrong of the Apollo 11 crew set foot on the moon. There were nine subsequent planned Apollo missions, which were Apollo 12 through 20. Apollo 13 ran into serious trouble en route, and so its mission was aborted, and thankfully with no casualties. Apollo missions 18, 19, and 20 were canceled due to budget cutbacks in an aim to move toward other space missions, such as the development of the space shuttle. So in all, only Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 put men on the moon, a total of 12. I'm showing you some clips and photos from these missions. For Apollo 11, it's interesting to note scientists weren't sure how soft the lunar surface was. They worried that Armstrong, upon stepping onto the surface, would sink right through, which is why you see him wearing these straps. Aside from documenting the adventure, the astronauts had the job of setting up instruments for numerous science experiments, primarily geological. Starting with Apollo 15, the astronauts had a dune buggy that allowed them to visit farther away from the lander. The Apollo program had launches going like twice a year, but it came to a close in 1972 with the completion of Apollo 17, and we've not been back since. It was one of humanity's most amazing, arguably the most amazing journey, to the moon and back. Consider, this was done in the 1960s, which was decades before the personal computer and many of today's advanced materials. But the technological breakthroughs made during that brief but intense time were many and significant, setting the stage for where we are today. Based upon experiments from the Apollo program and subsequent research, a rather interesting story regarding how our moon got there has emerged. This is the giant impact theory. Soon after our solar system had formed, there was a planet, or perhaps a planetoid, we call Thea, that co-revolved around the sun with Earth at a distant point called a Lagrangian point. This is where the gravitational force of the Earth finds a balance with the gravitational force of the sun. There are several different Lagrangian points, but Thea likely resided within either L4 or L5. Perhaps the passing of a comet or an asteroid threw Thea out of its stable position and spiraling toward Earth for a cataclysmic collision. And I mean cataclysmic. Basically, two planets colliding. But at a bit of an angle, which set Earth spinning rapidly, like about only five hours to rotate once. As the two bodies merged into one molten ball, Debris collected within a surrounding ring, which, within a fairly short time span, coalesced into the moon. This theory is supported by the geology of the moon, which has a very small core and a mantle very similar in composition to Earth. Tidal forces between Earth and the moon are responsible for the slowing down of Earth's spin, by the time of the dinosaurs, a day on Earth had slowed down to about 19 hours. Today, of course, a day is about 24 hours. Yep, days are definitely getting longer. Wait, tidal forces? Tidal what? What did I mean by that? Hang on to that question. We'll get to it. First, I think we need to address the phases of the moon, what they are, and how they appear as they do. Good science to you. Mm -hmm. 